My name is Vasumati. This is Yaga Breeze. I call Liu Ping. Aham Bo. This name is Anju. The strategy of 2010 is really interesting. You know, if we think about what's happening in healthcare, you know, globally, you know, there's a real need for uh, patient information, shared decision making. You know, all of that requires people to have access to credible information. We are one of the most important global providers of that information. We have responsibility, but it, but also it's an incredibly exciting thing to be able to do to know that if we do our job properly people will get better information and be able to make more informed decisions. Well, the strategy to 2020 is Cochrane's new strategic plan for the next six years. It sets out uh, a renewed vision for the organisation, a revised mission and four goals which the organisation is looking to achieve. Those goals focus around producing evidence, making evidence accessible, advocating for evidence, and then there's an underpinning goal that looks to develop our organisation and make it sustainable in the long term. We have to be dynamic to continue the, the, the tradition and the reputation that Cochrane has for the quality of our work and that the challenge of that is going to become greater and greater as the data sets increase, as the, the need for professionalisation and the complexity of the health questions that we look at grow and grow in the next decade. From my point of view as Editor-in-Chief, preparing high quality systematic reviews is the goal number one, it's the most important thing. What we're hoping to do is to make the process by which uh, our systematic reviews are produced less uh, cumbersome and demanding. What we want to do is to use new technology, to use uh, improved processes and ways of working collaboratively amongst the teams that we have across the collaboration to make the experience of producing a systematic review um, better, hopefully to produce the review faster. With the authors out there producing Cochrane Reviews, we're going to make their experience simpler and we're going to make it better once they've produced their review, that that review then gets into practice, it's in, it's in use, that it's not just published on, on the library and left alone, that they know that their work is really impacting on health decision making at a practical level. The new developments towards open access, where increasingly uh, people around the world want content to be available and, and used by them for free, we have to find a new model uh, that will help to, to meet uh, Cochrane's organisational needs, um, but also offer the data and the, the content that we do generate uh, in ways that can be used by many more people, accessed by many more people, used by many more people, and therefore for meet our, our mission. So committing ourselves as we have done to an open access future also offers us a, a real challenge. As incoming co-chair I think we need to have a firm plan for what we're going to do about open access and how the Cochrane collaboration is going to be sustainable and I think we need to we're thinking about it now and we need to get that into place as soon as possible. We're going to have a new focus on making an impact globally and showing how our work um, is used and making it used in, in practical, at the practical level. There are people out there who don't know what Cochrane is uh, and we've got to explain it to them in a way that's, uh, that's accessible to them and that helps them to, to understand what we do and use the material that we produce. I'm very proud of our relationship with the World Health Organization where we're an NGO in official relations. And I think that's really facilitating the reach of our reviews uh, globally. And it's just another way to get our reviews uh, into practice through global clinical practice guidelines, uh, for example. Our goal would really be to have every clinical practice guideline from the World Health Organization be supported primarily by evidence from uh, Cochrane reviews. It's really also important for the collaboration to 
to look at its own sustainability and how we develop people and how we attract people to come into the collaboration and offer them opportunities to, to learn. We see many young, energetic people come in. We see people now retiring. We see people uh, who have left the Cochrane Collaboration. And we have a bit of a gap in the middle. And so we really need to make sure people are in very secure positions and feel very welcome uh, coming into those leadership positions in the Cochrane Collaboration. Building an organization that really produces new leaders, uh, a new generation of people who can take Cochrane on for the next 20 years. They're the fundamental elements of, of Strategy 2020.